Hi everyone, here's another tutorial, this one on assessing interpersonal and communication skills. Your task will be to assess six dimensions of interpersonal and communication skills and then relating them to the student's English proficiency. As with the English proficiency ratings, you'll score the learner from poor to excellent. When scoring first, you want to consider the dimension definition. Next, you'll consider the lower and higher quality behaviors, which are essentially things to look for. The low and high quality skills listed are not exhaustive and the learner may do other things, other lower or higher quality behaviors that you need to take into consideration. You then want to rate each communication dimension separately, taking into account the dimension definition and the learner's lower and higher quality skills. As you rate each dimension, you should also consider how the English language proficiency ratings are consistent with your communication ratings. Establish and maintain rapport is defined as establishing and maintaining a positive, respectful working relationship with the patient. In this tutorial, I'll focus on the higher quality behaviors. The lower quality behaviors are usually the opposite. So first you wanna look for whether or not the learner made a courteous opening and also a courteous closure. Did they talk to you adult to adult and treat you as intelligent and always respectful in their interactions with you? Empathy is a bit more complicated, as we'll see. So to demonstrate empathy, the learner demonstrates verbally and or non-verbally the ability to connect to a patient and validate their concerns, and also at a higher level explores the patient's perspective and illness experience. Did they express concern about your condition or situation? And also consider, do the expressions of empathy seem sincere and genuine? Exploring your life or illness experience in detail, that is being curious about you, is a higher level skill requiring the ability to have an in-depth conversation with you. This may not be possible with the Kanazawa group who are trying to master basic English. If you're working with this group on the physical exam, take into consideration whether or not they warned you that the exam might be uncomfortable if it's appropriate to your case. So in this example, I have, uh, let me know if palpating you hurts, okay? Also, you wanna make sure that they maintain your modesty by regowning you if your gown is pulled down during the examination. Elicit information clearly means asking questions in an articulate, understandable, straightforward manner. How well do they ask understandable, articulate questions? And here you also want to consider under English language proficiency their ability to pronounce words correctly or speak in grammatical English. How well do they ask single, non-stack questions clearly? And also, how well do they ask the questions in a conversational way? For example, asking a question, listening to your response, and then asking another question. When the learners actively listen, this means that they are listening and responding to your statements and questions and using active listening techniques. First, do they appear to be listening by paying attention to you and making eye contact? A higher level active listening technique would be using active listening techniques, such as repeating exactly what you said or paraphrasing what you said by using similar words and phrases or reflecting your statements by using their own words. Do they let you finish your sentences without interrupting you? If they take notes, do they indicate that they are still listening to you, for example, by saying, I have to write down a few things when we talk, okay? 
In active listening, we're really looking at two things. One, do they appear to be listening, for example, making eye contact, but also did they demonstrate that they actually were listening and heard you, for example, by asking you follow-up questions or summarizing the information that they've gathered, which is really a higher level skill as well. Do they provide clear information to you, for example, by orienting you to the medical interview and physical exam procedures, providing basic information, and perhaps even educating and counseling you in a clear and timely manner? Notice if they made what are called orienting statements, for example, setting an agenda or explaining what comes next in the exam, for example, moving from the history of the chief complaint to taking a medical history to the physical exam. So that, do they walk you through the steps of the interview and the exam itself? Do they explain or use medical terms without jargon? Or if they do use jargon, do they explain what they're talking about? Do they provide a strong closure with, for example, a history summary or a wrap up? And this will also be reflected in the listening skills part because they would give evidence that they actually heard what you told them. For the physical exam, it's important that they make orienting statements so that whatever they do is not a surprise. Uh, for example, by telling you that they're going to check your legs for edema or listening to your heart or whatever the issue is. And also at the end of the physical, they should be providing the findings about the results of the physical exam itself. And finally, do they use appropriate nonverbal communication, which may be important for them to kind of fill in the blanks of their spoken English. So do they use appropriate gestures, signs, and body cues to compensate for or enhance verbal communication? The first thing to look for is their professional posture. How do they carry themselves? Do they look like an experienced physician the way they walk into the room and conduct the exams? Do they make eye contact with you when listening and speaking? Do they maintain a square posture when interacting with you that is facing you while speaking and listening or are they seating themselves off to the side, but never quite looking at you. Do they use natural and appropriate hand gestures to emphasize their points and convey meaning? And finally, do they maintain an appropriate personal closeness or personal distance from you? So your challenge will be to provide accurate and consistent ratings of English language proficiency and communication skills. And even more importantly, perhaps, is giving them feedback, focusing on how their English affected their communication with you. That's going to really be the challenge, is tying these two rubrics together. And we'll learn this together, I hope, through some practice. Before we meet online, here are a few tasks for you to complete. One, be sure to review the full guides to rating English language proficiency and the interpersonal and communication skills rubrics. Next, review the video and make some notes about English proficiency and communication skills demonstrated by the learner in the video. Then, after reviewing the video, you'll complete the feedback outline form, which includes rating each of the 11 things that you're going to have to rate during the encounters. And the ratings will, of course, be poor, low, fair, high, or excellent. And even more importantly, note the feedback that you would give the learners and try to be as specific as possible. And be sure that you have your outline forms with you when we meet, and then we'll discuss together how you came up with your ratings, what feedback you would give, and we'll all try to get on board and do this in a standardized and systematic way. So really looking forward to seeing your ratings and what feedback you would like to give these learners. Talk to you soon. Thanks.